All right, good morning, everybody. Wipe the morning sleepies from your eyes. Get ready for Math Lesson 62. Today, we're talking about estimating arithmetic with rounded and compatible numbers. I think everybody in the room knows what rounded numbers are, but maybe not everybody knows compatible numbers. So when we're talking about rounding, you're just talking about estimating getting an answer that's close to the actual number by using rounded numbers. Because it's easier to do math in your head if there's zeros in the numbers. So be careful when you're reading story problems. We've talked about this before. For clue words such as about or approximately, those are your heads up that they want you to do some estimating or rounding. So let's kick it off right now. Here it says, estimate the product of 29 and 18. So let's go ahead and do that. When they're asking us to estimate, unless they tell us differently, always round to the greatest place. In this case, we're going to go and round to the tens place, 29 closer to 20 or closer to 30. Hopefully you know that's closer to 30. 18. The neighbor is more than 5, so I'm going to round up its closest to 20. Next question, though, is do you all know what a product is? That is the answer when you multiply. So they want us to start off by multiplying 30 times 20. That should be easy enough. We don't even have to dangle zeros. Let's just do the cover up the zero trick. And I'm just going to go and look at, instead of thinking 30 times 20, what's 3 times 2? 3 times 2 is 6. How many zeros in the problem? I have two zeros in the problem, so I better have two zeros in my answer, right? But let's take a look at the second half of this problem now. And the second half of the problem is saying, is the estimate greater or less than the actual product? Now, I really could multiply 29 times 18, and I could compare them that way, but there's a way that's a whole lot easier. Take a look. 30 was our estimated number. 29 was the actual. 30 is greater than 29, right? 20 was our other estimated number, and that's greater than the actual 18. Well, I can go out on a limb right now and say automatically that it's going to be greater because the estimated numbers used are greater than the actual numbers. You don't even have to go and multiply it out. I guarantee whatever the product of 29 and 18 is, it's got to be smaller than the product of 30 and 20, right? Check out this one. Here they're asking us to estimate the sum Hopefully you know that is the answer when we add the sum of $8.95, $7.23, $11.42, and $6.89 by rounding to the nearest dollar before adding. So $8.95, is that going to be closer to $8 or closer to $9? The number next door is more than 5, so the first one is going to be $9. Then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to look at the $7.23. Closer to $7 or do I want to round up to 8 Look at the neighbor He's less than five. So this guy's going to be just seven dollars. 
$11.42. That's the tricky one because a lot of time people want to go right here and they'll say, oh, it's closest to $11. But they said to the nearest dollar. So you're actually not looking at the one in the tens place. You're looking right here. So is this closer to 11 or is it going to be closer to 12? It's going to be closer to $11. And my last one over here, I have $6.89. That is the number in the nearest dollar. Looking at our neighbor, is he closest to $6 or closest to $7? He is closest to $7. So now I have all my estimated and rounding taken care of. Let's go ahead and start adding. That's just going to be a zero. Four more zeros added together is zero. Here's where we got to start working. Nine plus seven is 16. Plus one more is 17. Plus seven more is 24. So I'm going to write down my four. I'm going to carry my two. And 2 plus 1 is 3. I have $34 right now. Check out this guy. When estimating division problems, round the divisor to the greatest place. But then we want to go and round the dividend to the nearest compatible number. And what we mean by a compatible number is a number that will divide evenly by the estimated divisor. So here I have 364 divided by 27, but we want to estimate it using compatible numbers. So we're always going to round the divisor to the greatest place. 27 would round up to 30. But if I rounded 364 to the greatest place, it would just be 400. And 400 divided by 30 is not going to divide evenly without a remainder. So I have to do something here. Take a look. I'm dividing by 30, if you remember, all the numbers that will divide evenly. It looks to me like, hey, this might work right down here, right? So let's go and use a compatible number, and I'm going to round 364 to 360. I'm not rounding to the greatest place. I'm using a compatible number that's going to divide evenly with 30. Because now if I set this up, 360 divided by 30, it should divide evenly without a remainder, right? And let's see if we're correct about this. 36 divided by 30, it's going to divide in there one time. Multiply back for 30, it's going to subtract for 6, and you're going to bring down your 0. 60 divided by 30, it's going to go in there two whole times. Multiply it back for 60, it's going to subtract for 0 without a remainder, because I used a compatible number for that division problem. So let's try a few like this because this is probably the toughest concept of the day. We're just going to go and round the divisor to the greatest place. 31 rounds to 30. But I have to use a compatible number for this dividend. What can I round 96 to that's going to divide evenly by 30? because it's not going to be 100. But I bet you if I rounded it to 90, that would work. 90 divided by 30, 
Okay, that's going to give us three. Let's try this one. 165 divided by 44. Take a look at the neighbor to the right. 44, we're just going to round to the greatest place. And I can keep them rounded to 140. What do I want to round 165 to? What's going to be compatible with my 4 or my 40? I want to go and round him to 160 because 160 would be divisible by 40, right? 160 divided by 40, that's just going to give us 4. And the last one that we're going to do here, let's go ahead and round this divisor of 25. The neighbor to the right is 5 or more, so he rounds up to 30. Take a look. What can I round 176 to that'll divide evenly by 30? Looks to me like closest number I would have is 180. 180 divided by 30 is going to give us 6. Estimate the perimeter of this rectangle by first rounding its length and width to the nearest 10 millimeters. So here I have 78 millimeters for the actual, so he's going to round to 80 millimeters and if he's 80 millimeters up on top don't forget to include 80 millimeters at the bottom over here on the side 31 the neighbor to the right is less than 5 so 31 is going to round to 30 and if this side is 30 this side over here also has to be 30 and then it's a perimeter problem. Just go ahead and add all sides. So 80 plus 30 is 110, plus another 80 is 190, plus another 30 is 220 millimeters, right? Or if I wanted to convert it to centimeters, that would just be 22 centimeters. Here it says an average cat weighs about 14 pounds. And there is a clue word for you about an average per an average porpoise weighs about 103 pounds. About how many more pounds does a porpoise weigh than a cat? Sounds like if I got this many abouts in a story problem, they want us to do some estimating. So 14 is about 10 if I round to the greatest place. 103, that's about 100 if I round to the greatest place. So 100 is about how many more pounds than 10? It's about 90 more pounds. All you have to do is subtract the two numbers. And that is all, folks. Make sure you go and double check. You might want to use a scratch piece of paper. And good luck on the Socrative quiz.